What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in back into On Air with the one and only rock star, the mic, David Dwayne, in the place to be right here, right now, live from LA. We on air with David Dwayne. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to another episode of this show that you guys love. I know you guys love because y'all tell me every single time you throw back millennial, all that jack of all trades stuff is back with another one. Back with another one. Back with another one. What? Back with another. Back with another. <laughs> y'all know I always like a little jingle going on, and everything else. But listen, tonight's show is with Ananda Lewis and Angelica Villa. Oh my gosh. Y'all should know Ananda Lewis. She is a legendary VJ host. See, VJ was the original name of what they call what I do and all these new people and everything else do. <laughs> That's what they used to call back in the day. But from MTV to BET, Ananda has been doing you know, just amazing things. And on tonight's show, she talked to us about her journey through the industry and through her journey dealing with cancer now at this time as well, too. So, you know, it was definitely a great chat to, you know, really find out what's all going on with her. Because like I said, she's a legend. She's a legend. And we have a really deep conversation about, you know, all the what she's been going through and just, you know, how the importance of, you know, doing checkup ladies and stuff like that. So we talking about that. And then our girl, Angelica Villa, she signed with Fat Joe and signed with Rock Nation. And she's got a brand new project out that you guys can check out. KKK, love chat with her. So we want to get into all dope things. We want to get into Dear Dwayne, entertainment news, all other kind of things. This is another show for the ladies. You know what I'm saying? I feel like we got a thing for the ladies here on air Dear Dwayne. Not saying that's a bad thing. Fellas, 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 fellas. Last week we had Saintville, we had... Uh, Jordan, we had uh, June 3rd, the other week, man, we are just doing so many different interviews with just amazing people of dopeness. Doesn't matter, you know, the complexion, the size, what you do, we're just walking in in great spirit and great energy. So make sure that you guys check it out tonight because I can't wait for you guys to hear these interviews. And right now, firstly, we're going to get into this interview with Angelica. Then we're going to get into Ananda and then we're going to just, you know, just, just talk some stuff. Dear Dwayne, because I got a message in the world for y'all today, okay? So let's get into it. Let's go. Hey, what's up, y'all? This your girl, Angelica Villa, and you're checking out with my boo, David Dwayne. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning back into On Air with your one and only rock star on the mic, David Dwayne, in the place to be right here. We got our girl, Angelica Villa, on with us. What's going on, Miss Angelica? How you feeling? I feel good. I feel good. How you feel? I'm feeling good. Listen, your shirt... First of all, it's giving me a vibe. Rest in peace to Ali, one of New York's very own and stuff like that. And I got to say thank you so much for this interview. Your project, Deception Season Part 1, is absolutely amazing. Congratulations on this, this sophomore project. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. It took a lot of time. <laughs> Let me ask you, because it definitely does take time to put together a sophomore project. So this sophomore project for you, what was the the process going through this project just to make sure that this was, you know, better than the first one, you know, working with Rock Nation now, affiliated with uh, Fat Joe. It's just like, wow, you've got a, some, you got some dope things going on. And then the, you know, the, you kicked off this project last year with such an amazing single just to get the, get the streets warmed up. And they was, they was warmed up on this one, but just going into this process, how was that for you? It was definitely a, a process. <laughs> it took a lot of patience. Uh, I'm telling you all a lot of patience, but throughout like, you know, this entire journey so far and just creating the album, then and, and keep in mind, this is my first official album because the project that I released before was like an EP and that was before I was signed. So, right. you know, now that, you know, like the album is out, I, this is my first body of work, my first real body of work. I feel like, you know, I kind of got the message across that, you know, I, I don't really like to just be in one box. I like to be open to, you know, trying new things, whether it's Spanish, whether it's R&B, whether it's hip hop. Like, I like to dive into a little bit of everything. And so I don't like to limit myself. Mm -hmm. um, it took two and a half years to do this album. When I first got signed with Joe, I was like 17. So I'm 21, turning 22 next or wow. in two months. And so, you know, it's been a journey, but are we you, deal with it. Are you a Libra or Sagittarius? Sag. Oh, come on now, Sag. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got that little fire. <laughs> yes. 
y'all got that fire and with this project you brought a lot of fire to it like you said with your you know your dominican roots is like that you didn't botch yourself in you got the you got the pop side you've got the r&b you've got the reggae you've got everything you got every single flavor incorporated in this project so for you just being able to say look i'm not putting myself in the box and that's just not the person that i am as an artist was that something that was easy for you to recognize that that's what needed to happen with you know developing projects and writing songs and working with different producers to not box yourself in but to give everything to it it was actually not that easy at first mm. the first step that i had to you know get myself accustomed to was being able to be open-minded and being able to work with other people because yeah i write like my own music but i also work with other people and so when i first got signed with fat joe and rock nation i was like all right this is my first album and so i don't want to act like oh i know it all like i i don't want to you know be like oh this is what i'm doing this is all i do like when i was hearing like um references i was like i don't know if i hear myself on this but joe says that this shit sound fire he, he think yeah. that i sound fire on it so let me give it a try it's yeah. the, like and was that the, more so like with the doing like the samples or just more so like the the production side of it you would say the production side of things whether it's like somebody sending a song in whether it's somebody sending a beat in it's like if joe think it's fire he think it's fire if i think it's fire i think it's fire so i'm gonna cut it and even if i think like mm, i don't know there was a couple songs that i was like i don't know if i really want to do that that like when I ended up being open-minded about it and actually tried it out, it actually opened up a whole new like, you know, mindset, a whole new bracket of, oh snap, I can really do this. And so some of the songs that, you know, like b basically those songs are not on the album, but if those songs didn't happen, then the songs that are on the album probably would have never happened. Right. I feel you on that because there are some records that you honestly have to get you got to get through which is that those early development stages mm -hmm. yeah records like that and they don't and they don't make them not because they weren't good but they just did not in really as you were evolving in that time in that creative process they just did not fit and there's the so way. many songs that did not go on the album there is a lot of songs that did not go on there that i personally love and i'm obsessed with but for one, I really wanted the message to be clear and I wanted the album to be easy to listen to. And three, I just, you know, I, you just never know what I'm going to drop then. You know, you just can't right. just give the whole thing out there. <laughs> I try to tell people that, like, don't give, don't put all your eggs into one basket, literally. Exactly. You got to spread them out. And even like when you spread them out. It's like you, you, as you keep going throughout this journey, you find better ones and you're like, oh, okay. I thought this was fire, but this topped it. And you continue to go, you continue to work, you continue to grow and it's just, you, you continue to learn. Yeah, and that's so important. And let's take it back to this record in the morning because when I first heard it, I was like, who is this girl? Like, <laughs> who is this girl from the Bronx that's just giving me so much flavor and so much energy? And being from the Bronx is like that and incorporating that to your music is like that and just being really true to each and every root of you. How yes. important is that to like to just make sure that that infusion is there and then making sure also that you represent and that you don't put yourself in a box for, you know, representing? I feel like, you know, with my music, I want people to be able to know who I am and like get a gist of, you know, who I am and what I've been through and stuff like that. So, you know, everything that I've been talking about in the music, I have either gone through that same situation, gone mm -hmm. through something similar to that situation, or I know people around me who has been in that situation. And so, you know, in my, with my music, I just want it to be as relatable as possible. And so, you know, being from the Bronx, I know there's a lot of other Bronx people, or even people who has visited New York in general, it's like, yo, I kind of got that same feel when I was over there. It, can't, it gave me like a, hey, kind of like a aggressive. Right, it just gave me like, like mm. yeah, like, <laughs> that's the vibe. <laughs> and it's my personality. Like, I'm again, I'm from the Bronx and I'm Dominican, so I talk fast. Like, I talk gritty. I talk gangster. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And that's what, it, that's what it is for the Bronx. Let me tell you something. Last week, I took my first trip to the Bronx, okay? I have never been to the Bronx before 
whatsoever. I can't tell you what side it was, but it literally took an hour from Times Square. And I was like, oh, child, why is it taking this guy that long? And I can't say that I, I, I got any thoughts on it yet, but, you know, I'm going to let you know what I think. But it, my first time going to the Bronx was, let, was last week. Very so I'm like, very yeah, fast-paced. I've heard that, though. It's very fast paced. There's a lot going on. My favorite part of being like from the Bronx is the fact that because I, I visited a whole bunch of different like countries and like cities, but there's like just something so unique about New York is that everything is close by. Everything is literally in the same community. So you could walk to, down the block and the corner store right there. You could get yourself a chopped cheese, bacon, egg and cheese. Like you get all that stuff. Literally walk Gotta down get the block. Gotta chopped cheese. Speaking of chopped and cheese, I had one myself earlier. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a true, a, a true Bronx woman. <laughs> And when you get the chopped cheese stuff like that, it's gotta be the it's gotta be right. So when you have like just speaking of food, when you have chopped cheese, is there anything that you add to like your your chopped cheese sandwich or anything? Or you just I think there's gotta be the most stupidest thing. But mm-hmm. I always say take off the, the tomatoes, but add ketchup. <laughs> you know what? I feel you. I'm not too much of a uh tomato guy myself, so I, I can understand. Just go go ahead, just just throw that ketchup on there. Take the yeah, tomatoes off. Yeah, but it'll make sense because ketchup is made out of tomatoes. So I right. mean, but it's like it got that little sweet kick to it. So I don't mind it. I like my I like ketchup in my chopped cheese, no tomato, everything on it. You gotta add mm-hmm. the sasson for um seasoning. It's like a yes. sasson, it's like an orange packet. Oh baby. And <laughs> that and you good to go. <laughs> It'd be good to go. And you know what? I don't know why I even thought about it more, but people putting tomatoes and then ketchup together it's now i'm just like okay why 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 is that a thing that we do i don't i don't do that i don't really like tomatoes so yeah uh -uh. i can't relate (laughs) oh cannot relate at all so when when in the morning like when the single just really started to catch wind and stuff like that how are you feeling because it like not only from new york but to the west coast to down south to the midwest it just it just caught flames it was a very surreal moment because I ain't never really been through nothing like that. And so it was a lot for me to just process, take in. And in, in like the gist of that, I was learning as well. Because again, I, this is my first time really being out there. This is really my first time being in the industry. And so when that song was going, it was just going. I was moving. I was just working. I was traveling from here to there to over here in the gist of a couple of days. Um, right. You know, it was just very, very fast paced. It was something that I was definitely ready for because I love to work. And so, especially when it comes to something that's my passion, it don't even feel like work. And so, you know, I love going to, you know, visiting DSPs and, you know, just going to, to different radio stations and stuff like that. I love showing love to everybody who supports me. And so, you know, especially if it's like a one-on-one interaction, like I'm all for it. And so, you know. I and I'm going to say that, like, that's really great that you love doing that aspect of it and you miss it because there are so many different artists and stuff like that don't that, like can, that don't like to. And I just be like, first of all, how do you think that you're going to be able to really move in this business if you are not connecting with the movers and the shakers? How does that work? Mm-hmm. And it really grinds my gear, but I love the fact that you love doing it. And I can't wait till we can get outside, outside and do that. So that, you know, people are doing their little small, little something, something. But <laughs> <laughs> I've been outside just a little bit. I ain't did too much. And I know that you've been outside. Everybody's been outside to do some type of work. But to be able to do it in that sense, and you think about these times now, how much would you say you really miss that? And what was it about? those times outside of you know because COVID has really hit everybody crazy and everybody missed something different about certain aspects of it but how would you say like you even miss like just connecting with people I know that's kind of like dumb somebody's gonna be like did he just really ask that question the way that he did but yes I asked because I want to get in depth the only thing I miss about being outside because I'm a homebody don't get me wrong me too (laughs) I'm a homebody I'm an introvert and I'm an extrovert mainly introvert and I'm starting to learn that more about myself as, you know, I keep going through this journey called life. And right. so, you know, during this COVID, 
one thing I can appreciate about the pandemic alone, I don't want to say COVID, because COVID yeah. is the actual virus. During the right. pandemic, I feel like it was a blessing in disguise, the pandemic alone, because I feel like it gave us a lot of downtime to be like, all right, like, if, if I'm not unhappy with this, I got all this time to get it right, get it tight. If I want to learn something else and I've been procrastinating and giving myself mad, mad excuses, like, damn, I don't got time for that. Damn, I'm too tired. Get your ass up and do it. That's what Hello. I've been telling myself. Because we right now, we have all the time in the world. We don't know when outside is opening back up. We don't know if, the, if we're going to have a second wave. It's like... So I've definitely been, you know, taking advantage. I got my ring light. Um, I've been, I've been doing my, my, my home content and stuff like that. I also got my setup in the crib, so I'll be recording myself. I don't even gotta go to the studio. I learned how to engineer myself and, you know, mix my little, you know, <laughs> vocals or yeah, whatever. <laughs> <song> and vocals. <laughs> yeah, and so you know, I, I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I, I also did a couple acting auditions during the pandemic. So, Ooh, you know, I've just no, been branching. Tell us. Yes, I've been branching out because music is not only what I want to do. I, I, I'm interested in the entire 360 of the entertainment industry. Like, when it comes to fashion, when it comes to anything fashion. Like, I'll be doing my own acrylic nails, you know. I'll be doing my own hair, makeup, can you, or whatever. Can you show them your nails real quick? Because I didn't... I wasn't nah, I didn't do these now. Because right <laughs> so, they look dope, though. Thank you. Oh, well, this light ain't even doing it justice. It's like a milky color. It's like a... So, a would you want to have like a, a nail salon? Would you really want to dive into that beauty world and fashion? Because nah, you I do. go off, off, off. I do. I do. I didn't do these. I, I'm trying to go front. But the last set that I did was popping. And so I did those myself. It was actually kind of like the same length. It was in red. Um, But I, I'd be doing my own makeup. I'd I be getting into it. I like to model. I like to. I, later on in the future, I definitely want to be able to be a, a model, a brand ambassador for yes. you know uh, either a clothing line or a makeup line. Either one of those two or both. I'm or making my own line. Like I definitely want to tap into all of that stuff: modeling, fashion, acting, dancing, singing, all of it. The whole three sixty. Let me tell you something. You got to do it all. You have got to do it all outside of your personality and stuff like that and your beauty too and then just like just the energy that you exude you've got to do it all yeah like, you have so much longevity in this business that it's not even funny me y yes you thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you i really no appreciate doubt. that seriously for real for real that I recognize just from following your journey, even honestly since last year, and so like that, just seeing you, like, at, like, cause let me tell you something. Your name pops up across my timeline so often. I was uh -huh. like, oh yeah, yes, all the time, all the time. And that for me, when somebody pops up on your timeline and you don't even follow them, but you're familiar with their art and what they embrace, that speaks so much value. Yo, that's love. I didn't even know that. Yes. You really <laughs> pop up on my timeline. I was talking to like a couple friends of mine, it's like this, and yeah, I'm gonna interview Angelica, and they were like, "Yo, she's dope." I remember hearing her record in LA. Somebody who actually worked in radio at LA in LA. I think I I don't remember the station right off my head, but it's one of them, one of them top three. What? Mm -hmm. Yo, that is love. Seriously. Yeah. You see, this is why I love to show people love, especially those who, who support me. Like, yeah, what? the people the people love you. And being able to even connect with your fans on social media and seeing those fan responses like that, because you performed on some major stages too. Let's not let's not skip that over too while we at it. You've done some things even before getting to working with Joe and, and Rock Nation. So to have those accomplishments and just be able to connect with your fans how is that for you it's a very very surreal moment especially like performing in these places like barclays madison square garden american airline arena like all of those stuff was very surreal when i was like in the moment i was like i ain't gonna lie i wanted to ship bricks <laughs> i didn't but <laughs> girl I, I, I feel you i would want to too because it's like who what nah and especially like when they tell you 
yeah, we're filming this. This is on TV. It's like, I can't F up because if I do, <laughs> that's it. They watching me. Yeah. So, you know, it puts a lot of pressure, but that pressure for me, honestly, is good. Because oh, look at your cute dog in the background. I know, so. cute. He's, he's so, so he's quiet, cute. surprisingly. He, he popped up. I was like, look at that little cute darling there. <laughs> nah, but it's a very surreal moment because with that pressure that I be feeling in that, in that like moment right before I'm about to get on and even like when I am on, it's like, yo, it's now and never. I came here for this. I know why I came here. For, like, I, it, it was for this. And so I got to either give it 100 or go home. <laughs> give it yeah. my all or go home. <laughs> and so that's really what pushes me. That's what motivates me. And, you know, at the end of the day, people, like, they be hitting me up like, yo, I was watching you. Like, oh, I saw you at the, the MetLife Stadium or I saw you at this, this, and that. And it's like in the moment for me, I be thinking nobody be knowing me. Like, I be going to these shows like that I'm going to perform in. And it's like, I look at everybody and they looking at me. And it's like, I don't think you know me. I don't think you know me. I don't think you know me. And then later on, they hit me in the DMs like, yo, I saw you at this, this, and that. I'm like, for real? Yeah. You should have said something. We could have right, said something. I'm not shy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, that's amazing. And with this project, listen, first of all, I we got to go through this track listen, and I got to look at it as we talk because 11 track on this project, you not only have collaboration with Jacquees and uh, Tory Lanez, but this 11 track project is definitely an introduction to those fans who are now getting to know you and, 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 a re, and, and I feel like a former introduction to those fans who might have seen you perform live or those who have checked out your first project. You talk about vulnerability, emotions, love, highs and lows. So to be able to, you know, not be afraid and not boxing ourselves into stuff like that and being a woman to talk about these uh, these topics, how important is that to make sure that you stay firm and to address all these things and not be, and not shy away from it? Because, you know, there's so much criticism that as a woman that I'm sure that you have faced and just as women that I know that y'all face so much, uh, but being able to address it all and not being afraid to talk about it, you know, how was that feeling? I ain't gonna lie. I used to be very afraid to be 100, like 100% mm. myself with like, you know, some of the things that I've been through. And so that was like in the beginning of when I was creating music. And throughout that journey, I was like kind of getting upset because I'm like, yo, I feel like people aren't really resonated with my music the way I want them to. Cause I feel like, like I'm talking about before, before, like, I, I feel like I used to talk about a lot of cotton candy and um, unicorns and rainbows <laughs> and stuff like that. Not literally that, but right. it was just, you know, it was like around when I was like 15 to like 17. I felt like it was just not too young. But it's like yeah. I have been, I have experienced things that I wasn't really talking about in my music. I was being very, very vague about it and very general. Yeah. But as I got older, I'm like, F that shit. Like, I, I'm going to tell my truth. This is who I am. If you like it, then you like it. If you don't, then get the fuck out. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> and with those songs, was there any particular songs that you had, like, did you release back then? And you said, look, I got this song. I'm going to take that situation and I'm going to pull it. And yes. I'm gonna talk about that, and I'm gonna go and pull it, and pull it, and pull it, pull it, and just spark that inspiration. Would you say it was like a lot of those records that you had out previously, or would you say that you started to just think back on those experiences that you went went through and just said, "I'm gonna write a fresh new record on this because I haven't even addressed it yet." Wow, actually, there's a song called "Fuck Love" on my EP. And that mm. was one of the songs where I was like, I do not care how I say it, what I'm saying, right. I'm going to say it. <laughs> and so <laughs> that was that, that EP, the 1998 EP, and 1998 was when I was born. That 1998 EP was, which was before like Fat Joe, before um, Rock Nation. That was just yeah. me and my uncle. My uncle, he's my manager. And so when that came out, that was the time where I was like, I don't care what I'm saying. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. But yeah. with the Fuck Love song, 
there has been a song i don't think it's out yet i had to listen to it really mm -hmm. i don't think it's out yet but there was a song where i reflected back on that one and i was like nah i feel like i didn't get the message message across like that was the young me trying to get the message across now i know the message so now i need to put it in the song and make it more clearer so i did write a song in reference to fuck love mm. I know the feeling of having those songs, me being an artist as well, too. And I've got one song where I just snap and go the fuck off. But I just be feeling like, wait a minute, we got to do a part two because I just feel like you just feel like you didn't go off enough and you just didn't get the message across because when you first delivered it to them, you had an objective, but they wasn't hearing you. And you're like, oh, so y'all still don't get it. Okay, boom. Let me give it, it to you. It reminds me of like Confessions Part One, Confessions Part yes. Two. Or Foolish and then Unfoolish by Shanti. It's mm -hmm. like <laughs> <laughs> because those records in a oh my gosh. Don't 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 even get me started on um Ashanti because she's another New York native that has done amazing things. It, especially popping. represented for the ladies popping and stuff like that. And she's had the experience of working with Joe. So since we are talking about Joe, and I don't want to talk too much on Joe, but his 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 legacy. It's so important, you know, important to mention like that. And the fact that you are working with him, how did how did that connection happen before we go back into talking about this project, Deception Season One? So I was actually doing a freestyle <laughs> to Wild Thoughts featuring um DJ Khaled, Riri, and Bryce and Tilla. Everybody was doing their own freestyle. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do my own. And so I posted right. it. It was like a singing version. And it was um, in, in response to A Boogie's Wild Thoughts. <laughs> and so I, had pu I put it up on Instagram. Pretty Lou, he's really, really close with Fat Joe. And I was already working with Pretty Lou with, um, for the single of his mixtape. And so um, he had told Joe about me because he had reposted the video. And Joe was like, yo, who's that? I was already working with him. So he had popped up in the studio. And crazy because... You know, when he popped up in the studio, he put me to the test that he pulled up with his wife. And later on, I ended up finding out that his wife was the one who was like, yo, you got to sign that girl. And speaking of Ashanti, since we are like are in that um, topic, when yeah. <laughs> the first thing that that Joe had invited me to was his birthday yacht party. Mm. Right. And it was me and my uncle. He had invited. Mind you, my uncle is my manager. And they manager, sketched yeah. Me. And so <laughs> it was the first thing, like, deal. the deal was never in the works or even talk. We didn't even talk about no deal or nothing. We was just, like, organically, you know, just building yeah, a just relationship. Yeah, just, like, networking, yeah. Right, networking and stuff like that. And so when he invited us, he was like, yo, pull up. Ashanti going to be there. Mary J. Blige going to be there. I'm like, hold on. <laughs> I'm like, oh, like I'm God. in there. Yes. Yo, and it's crazy because that was the first day I was supposed to go and to my first day of work at Skechers. Cause I was ready to give up on music. I was like, fuck that shit. Nothing's happening for me. This is and that. I'm about to I, I had already dropped out of um college, like mid semester. Cause I was unhappy really? there. I wanted to pursue music. And then when music wasn't what happening for me, I was about to go take that Skechers job. And for what? Because what uh, my sister for? called out for me. She was like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to make it. I never went to Skechers, and I went to the yacht party. It was the same time, same day. Girl, I would have did the same thing. Especially <laughs> if I knew that Ashanti and Mary J. Blige was going to be there. And in fact, Joe has invited me and my uncle, who's my manager, to connect and make an uh, First of all, you didn't even know that it was going to be an opportunity. But just being in, being in that environment is an opportunity alone. Because and you a wanted blessing. to, and a blessing, and you said that you wanted to give up on music. You went to college, so what were you studying in college? I was studying business management. <laughs> Girl, you ain't, and you ain't want to finish that. That would have been perfect. But I understand because when you, when you have that passion, that love for music and stuff like that, and you are literally holding on to your last, holding on, and you're feeling like you want to give up, you're giving it your last shot i ain't that. gonna hold you i definitely i want to go back and i definitely okay. want to finish because i'm not trying to promote oh like don't go to college or whatever yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. like what i'm saying it's just for me personally i was unhappy there yeah i was so unhappy i could sit in and the studio at the age where you can you can go even if it was 10 years when you said you wanted to go back girl you can't especially now we don't know where way way of the world is going to be at this part mm -hmm. it's like online 
and it's crazy because like I could sit when I first got signed with Joe, the first trip I had to take it was to go to Miami to Cool and Dre studio. I was in there every single day. I kid you not, every single day for two months, three months straight. Mm. And I could do that every single day, break night in the studio, not sleep, barely sleeping. It's rather than, you know, sitting in a lecture for two hours, not knowing what, like, what, professor, can, can, like, can we do, like, like some, what is an interactive, like, kind of test, or, like, an interactive lesson learning or something? Like, I actually like to, like, be hands-on and, like, actually, like, I don't like to listen to, like, a lecture. Like, he just talking for two hours, and I'm like, I right, so I got 45 minutes to go. Okay, copy. And I'm just listening. I'm writing down my notes, writing down my notes. And then it's like nine times out of ten, it's like, I. Right, so what am I learning this for again? <laughs> you know? Right. That's just me. That's just me. No, you know what? I agree with that. And I respect the fact that you said it because there are so many people who are watching us and, is going, and listening to us right now that are going to feel exactly what you say that have made, not, and I'm not going to say made a mistake because college is definitely... Some people call it a mistake, and some people don't. So I we're going to say, but we're going to say the We're going to say the decision. Make the decision to do that. And they're like, "Damn, this ain't for me," or "Damn, this ain't it right now." You know, because that whole process, especially when you think about, okay, cool, I'm in this class. I could be a little bit more productive, doing something else, actually getting to it right now for what it is. Because nine times out of ten, right now in this life. You don't need a degree for, for what you're trying to pursue. People you get read my mind all the time, every single day. You read my mind. I and I don't think it's a setup. I mean, I don't I don't think it's um what what were you saying about college? You said that it was a decision, but you were yeah, saying something a, before. It's a, yeah, it was it's a decision. It's, it's not a mis it's not a mistake. Mistake, there you go. It's not a mistake, but I think it's a setup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's definitely a setup. How they just trying to get us in debt. They just thirty thousand, <laughs> twenty thousand, thirty thousand, forty thousand, a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. What? Three thousand for books? For oh, books? <laughs> for one to have one semester? That's good. <laughs> mm -mm. Times it by four. Times it by what is it? Was it two semester? No. Well, I mean, there's you can do <laughs> all. You can do. Sheesh. You can do about four semesters in a year, but you got times it by four. It's like, especially if you're not on a full scholarship for what? Yeah, scholarship, get they get you there, but you know, you just got to be on your shit. If you mm -hmm. ain't a doctor, if you ain't like a lawyer, a lawyer, then I feel like, you know, just skip that process and just go ahead and do your thing. Well, do your thing. If you feel like you want to, you know, pursue something, just do it. Don't wait. Right. Don't wait on nobody. Yes. Just do it. <laughs> Don't. And what was it? Would you say like the, the discouragement once you dropped out as far as like music was concerned? Would you say maybe it was because things weren't happening and the way that you had saw it? Mm -hmm. I just felt like nothing was really happening in the moment. Again, it was before like Fat Joe it was before Rock Nation. Rock Nation happened a year after I was signed to Fat Joe, or a couple months after I was signed to him. But hmm, I, I was very discouraged because I felt like a lot of things wasn't happening like the way I saw it, or, like you know, and the speed that I seen it in, or that I wanted it to, you know, happen in. And so, you know, I, I always told myself I want to be like at this level by the time I'm 21. Now right. I'm not where I want to be yet. But you know, I, I'm definitely further than where I thought You're I was. Close at 21, and it's it's so amazing. I know that your family has to be so proud of you. So even having your, you know, your uncle as your management is like that. How important is it to keep, you know, keep close with family? Not even just during these times, but just at all times in this business, and to just I'm you know, super family oriented. I'm super family. Like my family, like that's my closest friends i don't really got a lot of friends at all i have one friend and she live in upstate so i'm always around family um yeah i keep my circle very very tight yeah. um yeah my sister she she was hearing you she was like, hey, hey. <laughs> she over there, shout out to so, her <laughs> yes how do you got a shout out <laughs> she said, hey girl <laughs> 
No, but my family, they have always been super, super supportive. My mom is my, my uncle's sister. So, you know, we keep it well within the family, super, super tight. And yeah. And then just kind of going back, like, how did you discover, like, this passion for music that you have? Because, like, you're such a ray of light, your energy, even with us talking right now, if anybody has not downloaded this Deception Season right now as we're talking, I'm encouraging them to go to iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, Tidal, especially Tidal. Go to Tidal yeah. and get it right now. We got to go oh, with the I home team. What was I saying? Like, the encouragement, right? I think that's what I was Right, saying. right, right. Yeah. So when I found out that I like love music, I was very, very young. I always say seven years old, but my, my family always tell me that I was younger. Um, mm. When I started watching Hannah Montana on Disney Channel, that's oh, why girl, I you really, have to get like, me singing. That's why I really you started. You was getting the best of both worlds. <laughs> yeah, you get the best of both worlds. Yo, that shit was my shit. <laughs> I can't hold you. Miley had her. a good thing going for her, and she still does. They nah, can't count fired. her out. They can't she, count her out. She is fire. Listen, I was all up in it when I was like, I forgot how old I was, but I was all up in it. I used to have her sheets and all that stuff. My mom, she used to play Alicia Keys, so that's another one who I used to like love listening to growing up. Um, who actually inspired me to want to keep singing and keep going and, you know, pursue this as an actual career and stuff like that. Um, I was listening to a lot of people, Aaliyah, yeah. like, I have a lot of inspirations, Lauren Hill, like, it was just so oh, many yes, people, Lloyd, if we want to talk about back in the days, like, <laughs> the jam, the era, Lloyd, Helen, what's another one, what's another one? Nah, no, forget it. You ain't even in it. <laughs> she, she was like, what you talking about? What you talking about? She ain't in the convo. <laughs> what, what male artist since you mentioned Lloyd? Because Lloyd don't get his flower. So I'm so glad that you mentioned Lloyd. Yo, you? What? Oh, oh, Marianne is another one with Icebox. Oh, my gosh. Usher. Usher. Yes, yeah, sis. Did you say that you love me? But you really don't. Everything that used to matter, no matter no more. Like my money, are the cars. <laughs> Flowers, well, I got from candies. Said I'm fortunate to have you, girl. You want to know? I really adore you. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, no, that's that's amazing that even those artists were some like were artists that really inspired, especially Alicia Keys. Oh my gosh, mm. her vibe, her soul, her everything is so fire. Are you excited for her new project coming out? Because listen, mm -hmm. that that record, perfect way to die. And I've been telling people like you got it. You know, like Alicia has not given us classic Alicia, but she snapped on that record for sure i was like literally my whole face was just like oh oh child she, nah she's so talented seriously especially especially heartburn off a of diary of leech keys <laughs> moment of silence <laughs> i don't think when they say confessions they say emancipation of mimi they say 8701 they have got to start recognizing and putting more respect on a diary of Alicia Keys. Mm -hmm. Because there was no skips on that project. It was just like all the way through. And songs in minor. So yes, I was oh I was just about to mention that. I watched the documentary too. Oh my gosh. I haven't seen that documentary in so long. It's good that though. That was a good one. That's a good one. So with this project, I love the single for you thank you and just you. the vulnerability uh, you know behind that record and literally i had i, I had to look down to my track list because you got so many of them 11 tracks and that record particularly it really spoke to my heart so with you just writing that record what was the inspiration just behind that and then you know how did you relate you know that to your real life experience and making sure that it, it resonated with you know your fans well first the way i relate to it is because i'm a hopeless romantic and so oh, me too, girl. <laughs> yeah, so that's how I relate to it. But as far as like the creation of the record, it was actually it, it, it might shock you. I was 17 when I did that. I'm, I'm this oh, whole, that was like it don't shock me. 
Mm-mm. Four four years ago, whoa! Four years ago, four. It was probably like four to three years ago. That was that song though, um, was recorded when I was first like signed to Joe. When I first took that trip to Cool and Dre, it was literally the first week that I recorded that. And so, it happened very very long ago. The inspiration came from actually Cool and Dre and his writer at the time. Um, we were just working, and it was a vibe. Joe, he. I really like that one um, in particular and his manager, or I, I guess you could say his right hand man, Uncle Rich. He's my Uncle Rich. Um, I, well, I call him Uncle Rich, but you know, you, you get the, it's yeah, the, the I, family vibe. Yeah. It's, all, it's all in the family. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So Uncle Rich, he was in the studio. He was like, yo, that one, that one. And it was a reference in the time at the time. So I'm like, hmm, okay, okay. Ooh, it got it kind of got that Harlem feel. And Joe, he yeah. kind of came up with the the treatment. It was me, Joe, and each. We all sat together and we came up with the treatment for the music video together and stuff like that. So I also got another music video on the way. So I'm really excited. Ooh. You know, your girl make the treatment or whatever. I'm happy yes. About that. <laughs> how how early in advance did you shoot the video for that record? Honestly. I can't even tell you. I forgot. <laughs> it was just a, a lot of things was happening. That was around the time where Morning Morning was out. So when Morning Morning came out, I'm like, I, I need a follow-up record. I need something that, you know, because it was kind of taking long for my album to come out. It was supposed right. to come out like a year ago. But everything happens for a reason. You know, I, I trust God's timing. And so I, I am not mad at it at all. If anything, I took it as a learning experience and I'm like, all right, we need to put something else together. What are we gonna do? And so me, Joe, and if we all sat down in one room and we was just throwing our ideas together. And Joe, he, he was adamant about doing it in New York because it gives you a hard feel. And so, yeah. you know, we did that. It was a vibe. Um, the music video was a vibe. Dave East was, <laughs> he, I, I, I wouldn't say he was my love interest in the, the video, but I was riding around the, the whip the drop top whip with Dave East. Right. <laughs> he was he, respectful. He, he, right. And he was a respectful interest. <laughs> in <Yeah. the> video. <laughs> yeah. So it was a vibe though. Like we we shot it in one day. We took the whole day to shoot the video from morning to nighttime. It was probably like one o'clock in the morning when we finished. So I me I'm a night owl so I can stay up. Yeah. <laughs> I can stay up. One What's o'clock what? is early. Oh, girl, I be trying to tell them. They be like, go to bed. I be like, why? I, want to <laughs> I may not go to sleep until never. Exactly. Come on now. The night is still young. And I feel like when you're always working, no matter what the time is, it's just about getting, staying on track. So yeah. for you, like staying on track with like your schedule and just making sure things are done, like how important is that for you now, especially during uh, these times and just make sure that you're up on it, like being on socials, you know, getting, staying in your daily routine. Like how important is that for you? It's very, very important for me, especially because before I, I like, it was a little bit hard to keep up. I ain't going front. It, it was my first time really being out there, like getting so many stuff like this. And so yeah. I, although I was open to it and I want to work, it was a little bit hard to manage it that, you know, sometimes like before this before, not now, before. I used to be a little <laughs> bit late. I used to be late. And so, you know, or my phone would be dying because of how much I was using my phone where I had to, you know, be get used to and be on top of myself where I'm like, All right, I got to charge my phone. If it's on 50%, I got to charge it. I got to stop letting my phone die. And if I need to get ready and I have an interview at this time, I need to get to, ready two hours before. Not one, not an hour and 30 minutes, two hours before. Just right. in case I have an extra 30 minutes if I need it. Or if I do use up the entire time, at least I'm not late. <laughs> Ooh, girl, yes. Because that, that buffer time, just to be on the safe side, is so important. Because even with me, yeah. it's like that preparation. I'm literally like, look, if, it, if I got to do something at 4, it's 12 o'clock for me. Yeah, yeah. If, if, if it's 5 that I got to do something, if it's 10 o'clock that I got to get ready, it's, it's 5 for me. That preparation and just making sure that you are ready at the ready is so important. So I love the fact that you said that because, listen, I used to be a little late tail ass, too. And guess what? Sometimes I'll be falling right under cracks. I'll be like, oh, you doing that <laughs> stuff again. Now, but like, shit happens. You know, shit yeah. happens sometimes. <laughs> it does happen. So let's also talk about, first of all, I got to ask you, is there a full version of Careful? 
No. <laughs> Actually, those uh, interludes, I recorded it in my crib. Yeah. Girl, you got to do some full version of them interludes. <laughs> And I know that's what the people been saying to you because they are so dope. I listened to that Carol interlude. I was like, damn, this just is amazing. And just the importance of adding interludes to your, your projects like that. Because we don't, I mean, there are people that do have their intros, their outros and interlude, interludes in there. But just the importance of keeping a great structured project and having interludes. And, you know, that's definitely something that we, we remember from the 90s, the 80s, the 70s, and even the times before that. But having that in your project, how important was that to say, you know what, let's let's add that to really structure this project? It was super, super, super important for me because without the interludes, you can't it like there's no tie into the story. And so when you when you listen to the whole album straight through in order with the interludes, you're like you're keeping up with how everything is happening in the order. And it's like, okay, so the beginning, she's like, I, right, she in love. She's like, prove to me why she put my cookie on ice for you. Like, yeah, you mm. cute or whatever, but come with the bag or I don't want none of that. And then it's like, I, right, I'm going to give you a chance, but don't fuck it up. And you got to prove yourself to me, so show me. And then show mm -hmm. me come next. And it's like, you know, now you got my attention. Show me something that's different. I'm literally saying right. this in these songs. And so... The next songs come up, and I'm like, you know what? I start to have an epiphany. I'm like, hello, like, come What's on up? now, like, yeah, step your shit up. <laughs> like I said, I, I I creep through your phone. I maybe I shouldn't have done that, but I I saw some pretty crazy things that you know. I had a feeling that you know you was about this type of time, but you I trusted you. I put my trust in you, and you know I didn't want to seem like I was tripping, so I let it rock. But it, uh uh. But well, what the fuck is this? You right. pulling up with another bitch when I'm not in town, or, or in my in my city? You pulling up with another bitch in the, in the club and shit like that next to my section? Uh uh, baby. <laughs> Bring the sparklers. Bring the bottle. It's about to get real. I, I ain't fucking with you no more. Bring the spark. Bring the bottle with the little sparkler. We gonna, mm -hmm. we gonna turn this shit into a movie. We gonna have a party. A serious movie. <laughs> And I love the fact that you just, first of all, you just wrapped up, though. You just gave them a whole synopsis of the project, literally. And that, and that's really dope that you did. That means they need to go download and stream it right now. We ain't playing with them in these streets, in or out. Okay. Okay. Because this project is amazing. And you got to address issues like that, like I said before, because it's so important to let men, let women, whoever is feeling like they can connect with this project, let them know, hey, I thought you was something different, but I had got this feeling. And I mm. seen something. People Basically, get that. Nah, they ahead, get that fucked up. I was gonna say they get that fucked up sometimes, and it grinds my little gears. I've been there, done that. I just be, I just be like, I feel like Brandy. Do you know what you have? <laughs> I'm saying <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it's like you give somebody the benefit of the doubt, even with like the little things that you've been peeping and the little stuff that you've been feeling. You give them the benefit of the doubt, but it's like, you know what? I should have just trusted my gut. I should have just trusted my, my instinct because you turned out to be a, a fuck boy. <laughs> Too many of them. I, I feel bad for the ladies. I feel so bad for y'all. And I feel sorry for the guys that got to deal with fuck boys, too. It's just like... <laughs> yeah. But is it true that you in a relationship? You in a happy relationship now, my friend? I ain't gonna talk about it. I ain't gonna talk about it. But you, ha but you happy though, right? 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 You're I'm happy. happy. Yes, I'm that's happy. good. <laughs> and how would you say, like, even during like these times like that, like being in a relationship, like, has helped and stuff like that? Because now, like, you can really be interactive. It's like that. There's not too much distraction. Of course, you gotta, you know, stay on your focus and stuff like that. But just for those who are having difficulties with understanding, hey, you can balance. You know what, like, how would you say, like, your balancing is going, like, is working out for you right now? What advice do you have for men and women that are having a hard time with that? Communication is key. If you cannot communicate, there's no relationship, whether it's a relationship within a significant other or whether it's a relationship between family or friends or whatever the situation is. Communication is key. 
And I'm not saying just like communicate and just talk about whatever you feel like, oh, I feel this, 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 and that. And I feel like you, this, 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 and that. No, communicate, talk, talk like a, a human being. Like you see the way I'm talking right now is how yeah. two people should be able to talk and, you know, listen to understand rather than listening to rebuttal. Because I feel like a lot of the times, you know, when somebody's having a disagreement, you know, they listen to rebuttal rather than listening to understand. And so that's something that I can say for any relationship that anybody may have, you know, communication is key. Like listen to understand, not rebuttal, just so you can have a comeback and just so you can shut down what the other person is saying. I actually try to listen because sometimes you might be, be wrong. Sometimes I have been wrong. Right. Know? And I try to tell people that, like, if we don't have communication, we don't have nothing. You just get so caught up in conversation and you just feel like you vibe. Like, we literally are vibing right now. I think it's been, like, 45 minutes. I ain't even counting. But, like, we are really vibing. Communication really is something that a lot of people fail to understand. And I'm always preaching on the platform that with communication, you can either make or break a situation. And you don't want to make a... And you, and you don't want to break a situation that is good for you because you don't know what cause you are harming which could have been good for your long term versus your short term see there's a lot of people to think about the short term aspect of it and don't think about okay if i do this i stop talking what is that going to do for me in the long run they think so selfishly that's good you that was a <laughs> that, was a, that was a word that was a why are you preaching <laughs> 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 so much listen so much experience in 27 and, and 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 now finally catching that getting that growth you know what i'm saying and once you have reached that point of growth and you be like damn whether it's personal business or whatever it takes you there and yeah. to that point where you start with all things that you you knew that it made sense it all starts coming into perspective and you start to say, you know what? Thou right. shall not. Right. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't tripping. Because like you said, if you don't go with your gut, you're gonna be fucked. <laughs> I like that. If you don't go with your gut, you're gonna be fucked. <laughs> <laughs> you really What's your are. Sign? What's your sign? Taurus, April 27th. That's why, yo, every Taurus that I meet is so hilarious. Like, they're just themselves. I, listen, and that's how I have to be. Because you got one life to live, seriously. So if, like, you don't be your authentic self at all times, there is a serious problem going yeah. on. In, in, not even just in your life, but in the world. You uh -huh. have to be your unapologetic self. Mm-hmm. And... And I love the fact that you embrace that and that we're having this conversation. Listen, we can go on and on and on. As a matter of fact, we going we we might have to be best friends after this because listen, we buy we seriously facts for real. <laughs> and I and I just gotta say, like, just having this conversation with you and stuff like that has been so amazing. Just hearing, you know, how you are dealing with, you know, being in a relationship during these times and, and honestly understanding that communication is important, having those plans for your project already in motion and saying listen i was 17 when i recorded this you know started to record this project but these were the songs that touched me these songs weren't weren't it for the, this batch right here but trust me on that next 11 we got some stuff for you and the fact that you even developed yourself as a person and said you know what my self-confidence wasn't there but guess what i got it now yeah it's a process it ain't gonna happen overnight and I feel like I'm the perfect example for that because I've been doing music for like what 11 years now and I'm still not where I want to be at but it's just, it just goes to show that nothing's gonna happen overnight and if you really want it as bad as you say you want it you just got to go you just got to keep tackling it you got to keep going for it if you have a plan a do not doubt yourself and be like all right just in case that don't happen I'm gonna go ahead and plan a, a plan b because the wow. second that you start thinking about like thinking about it like that you're already doubting yourself so if you have a plan a keep going at it like Fuck what anybody else says. Nine times out of ten, the criticism that a lot of people may get is from the same people who are not even aiming to do the same profession that they're trying to do. True. That ain't so, doing it at all. Don't even want to. They they're mad at themselves because they can't do it. Oof. Yeah. They, like they, <laughs> they don't even be jealous, Angelica. No, they don't even be jealous. They just be mad because they they see it, they admire it. 
So they 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 hate themselves instead of loving the the gift that God gave them. Because this is the number one thing, and I I, I just want to stress this while we're having this conversation, right? You guys have to be grateful for the gifts that God gives you, what He gives you. Amen. Don't go out there searching for anything or feeling any type of malice or ill will to anybody for what they doing, how they rock it. Love what you do, embrace yourself, embrace other people, and don't be afraid to do it. If you try to look for happiness outside of yourself, then you're always going to be disappointed, always, because the true happiness lies within yourself. Mm -hmm. I try to tell them, but they don't be hearing me, so I'm glad that we are having this conversation that gives them, you know, that sense of urgency, and you know what, I can feel that confidence in myself, and guess what, I, I'm not going to feel bad about the person that I am, this is now the time to yes. embrace myself, do them uh, DIYs, get on them YouTubes, do everything, paint that house, you know, like, just yes. whatever, whatever the hell they want to do, and honestly, maybe not even physically paint that house, but paint your house to how you see your life. Because your foundation, where everything stands and lies. Like me, hold up, hold up another example. I felt like Bob the Builder for a second. And I just had to throw <laughs> that out there because, you know, I have my setup in the crib. And so, you know, this is where, this is how I'm creating music. This is how I'm working. And so, you know, I want a little Bob. And so I felt like Bob the Builder because I put some LED lights on the ceilings Ooh. around the whole Did, you, did you do it on the bottom too? Nah, but that's next. I didn't have I was about enough. to say, girl, you got to do that next. <laughs> I didn't have enough. I, I bought like two packs of, um, I think, 48 inches. And it, it went, a, it wrapped around the whole top. And I felt like Bob the Builder because I did that shit so clean. Yeah. <laughs> you said that the in whole vibe. No, I, and, and, and I feel that because it's so important to love the environment that you work in and that you live in, especially right now. Yeah. We, because we have to adapt. I love the fact that you've adapted and I love your energy. I Thank just you. hope that people really tap into this project. And you've been, so before we even wrap up, the recording process just into this next future projects, how has that been? Like, what are some of these subject matters that you can tease that you're talking about without giving them too much because we want the kids to tune in. We don't, we don't want to give them too much. It's going to be a season two. See, but you see, you see how I said part one when we started, right? I, I felt the vibe already. It's going to be a season two. And the only thing I would say about the next project is going to be a lot more grittier and a lot more aggressive and a lot more fuck you type shit. <laughs> yes. And it's so important to keep, to keep that energy and not even, and not to be vulgar or anything, but you have to keep that mind state to say, fuck you. And fuck you does not have to be directed to anybody, but it can be to your old self and saying, hey, fuck you. I didn't like how your behavior was back then, but guess what? I can always self-improve and rise to the occasion. Even though I didn't do anything bad, but I can always shine through and be brighter. Yes. That's what it's all about. Yes. But I'm so proud of you. Congratulations on everything that you've been doing. I like, Thank listen, you. this conversation was so, so, so amazing. It like was. I said, I can go on and on and on, but you know, we be here all night. Yes, <laughs> it's a vibe. It's genuine. It's genuine. It's a, definitely a genuine vibe. And I thank yeah. you so much for having me. Seriously, I really appreciate that. Absolutely, anytime. You'll definitely have to come back with a uh, season two and oh, the next projects. Listen, <laughs> your top, your top three favorite. Before I ask you, are our favorite question that we love to ask all our guests before we end. Your top three favorite off this project. Let us know. Your plug. Girl, that's my record. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. Yes. Stay tuned for that music video. Oh. That's all I'm going to say. Your plug. <laughs> by <laughs> your side. And show me. That's the perfect uh, three. Uh, <laughs> I was like, yeah. Listen, I, don't, don't, don't do that. I might have to, you might have to sing a whole little 30 seconds. You keep doing yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, nah, Show Me is definitely a vibe. If you haven't heard, matter of fact, speaking about singing, I did a, a recently, a couple days ago, actually, I did an acoustic performance to By Your Side. 
I just dropped that. And so I really want to push people to go over there and watch it. Click the you link in my bio. That, my dear. If you want to hear me sing, baby, a little one, two, go ahead. There you go. That's, that's what I'm going to drive them to. Go over there, yeah. baby. <laughs> Drop the link in the bio on Instagram, which is so important that they follow and stay connected with you because, listen, you're one that is not going away in this industry whatsoever. You're here and you're going to keep it going. So as a woman and as, you know, an artist and stuff, what are two to four things that you exemplify the most? confidence be confident with yourself like no matter it don't and when i say confidence and i feel like beauty also is related into that because confidence is beauty 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 is confidence um don't matter your skin color don't matter what you look like don't matter nothing none of nothing, don't matter how old you is if you have confidence then you are beautiful be yourself being your authentic self is confidence and beautiful um so i feel like i definitely as a woman I, I tried to put put that out there because like you were saying god gave us a gift god gave us us we are not supposed to be looking outside of ourselves for happiness so if you are happy within yourself you are happy with who you are you are happy with how you look you are confident you are beautiful another thing is actually just yeah i think i said it both in there yeah. being confident and being yourself being your true authentic self is both in there so yeah yeah you said it perfectly and i love the fact that you exemplify those things because it's so important to just get that energy and so many people have to realize like if you aren't true to yourself and being confident in what you do and and, and who you are most importantly you won't be able to really see your full potential and i love the fact that you you went through your highs and lows and now that you're embracing that you know now it's just going to continue to be amazing for you thank you absolutely Yo, we so gotta link up this gotta yes. this gotta happen in person <laughs> we have to girl i'm being in new york soon i i didn't want to tell the people but we're gonna be in it i'm gonna be back soon so yo let soon. me know seriously we gotta yeah. link up let's definitely make that happen because this was such a vibe we 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 here we here now so this is this is so amazing and Thank you so much for this amazing conversation, no doubt. So let the people know where they can follow you on social media, where they can download the project, because if they don't, oh, it's they gonna, gonna be slapped a fight asleep. on my block. Yes, they're gonna get slapped asleep and they ain't gonna be able to wake up until they download it. Nah, <laughs> you can get my album everywhere. It's available on all, every platform, all platforms. And you can find me at Angelica Villa, which is A-N-G-E-L-I-C-A-V-I-L-A. <laughs> All right, guys, so that was our interview with Angelica Villa, and we are back. We're about to get into some entertainment news right here, right now, because we got some stories for y'all. So we got to get into it real quick so we can get into Dear Dwayne, then we can get into our interview with Ananda. Anyway, you guys, so Cardi B and Offset are expected to deliver their second child in September. The reports coming from All Hip Hop confirming this news, and we are looking for, looking, looking like they about to have a Libra, baby. Is this a Libra? We have a Virgo. Who knows, but I'm putting it in the atmosphere that I feel like Cardi and Offset are having a Libra. So I'm just saying, so we're gonna put that out there. <laughs> so Pop Smoke's brand new album, Faith, debuted at number one on the Billboard's Top 200. Yes, just a couple weeks ago when the project came out, actually last Friday, as the project dropped, it debuted at number one on the Top 200. Also with new albums in the works, Kanye West's brand new album is... Uh, gonna be another month you guys i know that he did this big concert performance arena like listening shindig that he did right but the album's not done yet so he's gonna take a little bit of his time and you know give us the album you know what i've noticed about kanye's recent project and even with tiana taylor's project to you guys it took a moment like yes even though it was one of those things that were in the works and stuff like that but i also feel like it was one of those projects that were also just kind of like all right let's give people a preview let's get this out by a certain period of time not really having like a full uh, mixed master type of situation so hopefully we get that with this new album kanye this donda album that everybody said is amazing that they heard i was not i was busy in la so i didn't get a chance to watch the stream but y'all been telling me that it's good so i'm gonna just go with that you know what's not good though how rick ross got 100 cars but don't know how to drive what you don't have a driver's license what's going on y'all so on instagram he took to his instagram story that he has 
owns a hundred cars but does not have a driver's license. Now, I'm not going to say it's the worst thing in the world to not have. But, you guys, I would think if you got a hundred cars, you would want to drive them. But, in this business, you're so always just going here and there, here and there. So, hopping in the Lyft, hopping in the Uber, having a chauffeur to get you to these places that you want to get to should never be an issue whatsoever. So, maybe he'll get his license. First of all, guys, Rick ain't old, so he can get his license at any time. But, it's just shocking. Like, you don't have your license at whatever age you are already? Damn it, 100 cards? What the hell's going on? But that's okay with my mom like business over here. <laughs> also, the brand new, the punk era for Young Thug is about to start in October of this year. Yes, get ready to drop the brand new album. We went for Young Thug album. I know some of y'all don't like him. I love Young Thug. He's just so raw. He's just so rock star. He's just so energetic. He is who he is. And I feel like in this life, we have to be exactly who we want to be and be focused on ourselves. And that's definitely one thing for sure. He is definitely focused on is himself. And, oh, speaking of focus, we got to talk about focusing on ourselves during Dear Dwayne right now. Because that's what the topic of discussion is for this episode this week. Now, I know there are so many times in life where we focus on other people and making them happier, being a part of their teams and being a part of their collective forces like that, right? But what about us and starting with the person that we are? Because if we don't do for us, how can we say that we'll do for others? Like I've never been able to ever understand and stood the whole process of focusing on others, but not ourselves. Listen, you guys, and focusing means <laughs> on self means in so many different ways, professionally, personally, um, eating. All types of different things. So when it comes to focusing on yourself, you have to, number one, be firm of who you are. I believe being firm with who you are, knowing who you are, and not being afraid to let that be known should be the number one top priority in saying that, look, this is what I want to do with my life. Not even just in the, in the short-term sense, guys. Short-term and long-term. It makes all sense in all things, right? What do you want to do professionally for, for you know to take care of yourself? What do you want to do that's going to feed your mental health? What are you going to feed your body? Like, what are you going to eat? Like, what type of drinks do you like? What type of things don't you like? What type of you know what are what fuels you? What keeps you going at the end of the day? These are things that should be at the main focus of focusing on self, right? Because without these things. You know, you can't do for others. You know what I'm saying? You can't be in a relationship trying to make sure somebody else is happy, but you ain't worried about your mental health and what's going on in your own house and dealing with your trauma and dealing with, you know, highs and lows, peaks and valleys. I think that it's so important that we focus on the littlest, the biggest things first, and then we step it on up and then get to other people and get to us even more. You know what I'm saying? But even when I think about that, you guys, right? We do need to have people in our corners that are going to help us, you know, be uplifted, stand our ground and be firm with who we are. Because sometimes in this life, it's confidence doesn't come as easy for everybody. You know, like, you know how they say common sense ain't too common? Well, self-confidence ain't too common either. So know your tribe. I know I've said this before on my lives. I said this here on this show. But know your tribe because you most importantly want to make sure that you have good people that are fueling you with good energy and that are speaking good things into your heart and in goodness without that you're unable to focus on yourself if you have so many different things that are going on here and here and it's not right and you're just trying to like go 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 and you're racing and you're racing and you're racing and you're racing you don't have a chance to really sit down <laughs> right like sit down like i'm doing in this moment for this show sitting down speaking to you guys being about a message being about a word and focusing on what that is and preaching that i mean what i'm doing right now is prime example. So you've got to be able to focus on yourself, you know, focus in many different ways that is going to help you take care of yourself and self-care, you guys. Self-care, mental health is the number one thing that we always have to make sure is at a number one all time high. So I just wanted to make sure that we talked about that in the briefness. I know this was kind of like long-winded in a sense but it was also not as long-winded but it was kind of confusing for somebody if you catch my drift you catch my drift next week i do want to also just talk about 
arriving and becoming on the show. I watched a sermon from uh, Pastor Ture that he did for Sunday, for uh, this past Sunday, and where he was just talking about war of identity. So I want to get into arriving and becoming as that is such a big, important thing that I've been witnessing for myself at the age of now being 28 years old, you guys. And it's any and it's something that I've been having a conversation with a lot of friends within conversation, just, you know, as I'm just growing in my professional space, I'm growing in my personal space, I'm growing in all ways possible, I'm pushing myself in different directions, I'm taking things out. I'm bringing things to the forefront. You know, I'm mixing things up. You know, just being just being honest and being secure with those things, you guys. So um, we're going to talk about that next week. But let's get into this interview with Ananda Lewis right now. But again, guys, make sure you guys follow On Air with David. Info at onairwithdavid.com and at David Dwayne for any Dear Dwayne, questions that you guys have, any advice, we're going to get into some industry advice next week, but I want to make sure that we stay with the message and the word. I think that it's always great that we have this segment of the show where, you know, we're giving advice as well too, but I feel like it's also most important for us to speak goodness and speak a testimony and have a testimony with this segment and really use this segment to our fullest advantage since I'm really not doing a lot of IG lives and stuff like that. And, you know, there's just a lot of different concepts that you guys are seeing while I work on other projects. So just wanted to make sure that we covered all ground bases when it comes to Dear to Wing. So that's it, you guys. All right, let's get into this interview with Ananda Lewis right now. Hey, you guys, it's Ananda Lewis, and you're hanging out with my friend, David Dwayne. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning back into On Air with your one and only rock star and my David Dwayne in the place to be right here, right now. We've got the beautiful and talented Ananda Lewis. Now, if you guys don't know who Ananda is, oh my goodness, clearly you weren't a too early 2000s, 90s baby. You didn't watch MTV. You didn't watch Teen Summit on BET. But Ananda, she was an incredible host and she still is a credible host and she's joined with us today. How are you, Ananda? Hi, David. I'm really good. Nice to see you here. Nice on, on your platform, uh, your platform. <laughs> <laughs> and like Did you say, a rock, the rock star with the mic. What's what's your yeah, tattoo? On the mic. Mm-hmm. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. Like I was telling you before we got started, I grew up literally watching you when I was a kid. So it, it's just such an honor to be speaking with you today because uh-huh. you were one of those host pioneers that set a tone. So I just got to know when you mm-hmm. think about your journey as a host and personality, like how does that make you feel to know that you really set a, a tone for a lot of these people that are now on the MTVs, the BETs, the entertainment. All t- over. It, yeah, <laughs> all over, the insider, all of that. You know, it's funny because you you never know what you're doing in the moment. I don't think, you're not aware of um, the time you're in. I obviously couldn't have created any of that myself. I was a part of some really amazing television at a really magical time. Um, that set the precedent for a lot of things. Those things I don't control. The parts that I do have a little more control over, um, being myself, trying to stay as true to who I always have been uh, as I can. That's hard to do in TV. It was especially hard to do in TV back then. I guess how I feel is, is grateful. You know, I worked really hard during those years. I was, I was um, having a lot of fun and also dealing with a lot of my own kind of um, personal traumas and dramas and demons and and doing that all kind of in the background while I was presenting this happy image on TV. And and it wasn't fake, it was just, you know, balance. It was like, uh, that wasn't the place for it. So I was dealing with a lot in my personal life and then being able to come into the TV world and forget about all that and have an escape. So I think it was just as beneficial for me to be doing it as it was for you guys to be watching it considering all the stuff I was dealing with. But what I'm grateful for is the, the history that it's allowed me to um, really pull from right now that I wasn't even aware of, that what you're talking about, um, inspiring young people who look like us, you know, to be able to say, hey, she's up there doing that, I can too. Or look, I can be attractive and talented and, and talk well and present myself well. I don't have to be, you know, half naked. Well, I was half naked sometimes. Anyway, um, <laughs> I mean, you can do it all. That's what I would right. recommend. You can do it all. <laughs> but you know now it really helps me now I feel like I I uh I need that platform I need that all that love coming at me I need that um having really planted myself in the hearts of your generation because of the journey I'm on now and the message I want to um, help women understand better and do better at than I did these days so I'm grateful for it because it's it's very useful these days for me Absolutely. And, and you spoke on something, just being able to 
necessarily hide what you were going on personally and, and, and internally while making those amazing accomplishments on the camera. How was that for you to just, you know, just kind of push forward to live in, live in such of all of those moments and to be able to balance? Because that's not a difficult, I mean, that's a very difficult thing. It's not easy to, you know, hold all those motions, emotions together, but you maintained it. I mean, it, <laughs> yeah, maintained it. Um, to be really honest with you, since I just, you know, feel like we're just talking, yeah. um, I, I didn't have healthy habits back then. I was, I was really, um, I was abusing my body in a lot of really um, unhealthy ways. I had a lot of bad habits. Um, uh, I didn't feel like I could be honest about those um, at the time. And one of them was I was a, a really heavy duty smoker, which um, oddly enough, doesn't have anything to do with how I ended up dealing I had with breast cancer. And I was like, but, but, it make, but it makes sense though. It makes sense. But the testing that I've done shows that the toxins that would be in my body if smoking for as long as I did had anything to do with the cancer I'm dealing with now um, were with there was a connection and there's no connection. So I did a lot of cleansing, you know, after I left television, I left to go take care of my grandmother for the last two years of her life. And during that kind of period and after I really cleaned my life up, you know, I really was able to be out of the public eye, focus on myself, deal with my traumas, be in therapy, um, work on myself, you know, and, and, and heal from a lot of all that stuff. And one of the things I did was quit smoking. And so during that time, I did a lot of cleansing. I did a lot of taking care of my body and it worked according to the tests that I've you know, had done very recently. Um, none of those toxins are still in my system. The great thing about our bodies is that they heal, they clean themselves. They will do the work if you help them just a little bit, you know, and, and so I did, and that stuff has been out of my system. There are other things that were environmental exposures and probably a lot of emotional uh, toxicity uh, more recently that probably has contributed to what I'm dealing with now. But back then, uh, you know, you don't think of that kind of stuff when you're young. I was doing what everybody around me was doing. It wasn't like I was an enigma. Everybody I knew was doing some kind of drug. Everybody I knew was drinking heavily. Everybody I knew was smoking something. So that was the environment. It wasn't unique to me, but I was the one who wanted to hide it. <laughs> and, and I felt like, you know, it was in real opposition to the the real part of myself that was being held up in front of the camera, which was this, um, you know, smart and strong and, and able-bodied woman. Uh, I don't know that I think there's a huge conflict. I think everybody's dealing with something and we all have problems. It doesn't take away from you being a great person. It just means you're a normal person who's dealing with something. But I didn't understand that then. So I felt embarrassed and ashamed, you know, a lot of the time. And I would like sneak and hide and try to manipulate the environment to be able to go have a cigarette in the back or you know I was really I was really I was like a crackhead with it I when I was thinking back I'm like I was running around corners and stuff what am I doing you know and it was just cigarettes which now we don't look at as that big of a deal but I felt like it was a really bad habit it is definitely yeah. the worst habit I've ever had it's a nasty habit and it's one that um really impacted my life in some significant ways back then but the other traumas were more um, childhood traumas and, and you know, things that happen to us over life. Life is not perfect and we get hurt and we get, you know, we have pain. And if we don't deal with it right, it can really um, have bad effects on us larger than it should. And that was, that was true for me. I went through a lot as a child and I went through a lot as a teenager and I didn't handle getting those things out of my system well. So it, the way it really worked for me was, like I said before, TV was kind of like an escape for me. It was, it was a chance to get away and, and you know, live this kind of magical life. And then it was like Cinderella. And then I was back home scrubbing the floors you know, afterwards, <laughs> dealing with my own stuff. So there was, it was a lot of um, emotional instability for me at that time. And, and I think that's one of the things that makes me so grateful for having kind of survived it and, and having been able to hold up um, a very true image um, that other people were able to look at and be inspired by. Because I think what it really tells you is you, you can look at anybody and think that they're you know, perfect or great or everything's good, but understand that there is something going on behind the scenes. I don't know how bad it might be, but if they're human, they're dealing with something. That's just how it is. And it's unfortunate for celebrities that you know, they have to deal with it in the public eye because that makes it that much more difficult. I mean, think of some of the things you might've dealt with in your life. What if everybody knew about it and mm. was constantly talking about you and constantly telling other people you know, and making up things on top of that? Like you would lose your mind and we see people losing their minds. 
we've seen it happen. So I think it's a difficult industry to be in, to also be human in. And yeah. I definitely experienced that. It definitely is difficult. And I'm glad that you brought that up as a point, because even for myself, I use this platform as my escape from, you know, the trauma that I've dealt with. And because I yeah. have to create an avenue because I suffer from depression. So I was mm. like, let me do something that is going to not only help myself, but to help others feel that they can right. do all means necessary and just and just setting a perfect tone. Because like you said, what we go through prior to, and this is a lot of people that are in the industry, what we have gone through before getting into the business is something that stays with us. And yeah. we have the difficulties of breaking that. And then once we get into it, there are things that are so beyond our control that we sit back and like you've actually experienced yourself and been like, this is not me. What the hell is going on? I cannot do this. Right. I cannot do this. And I will not stand for this, especially right. as a woman. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Exactly it. And when I watch young people, you know, well, the next lane of people coming, right. coming up the road I've been on these days, I am just in awe of how you all deal with the spotlight with social media. Oh, I would have yeah. literally lost my mind. Wait, first of all, if it was social media back then, it wouldn't have just lost my mind. Everybody would have lost their mind. <laughs> Listen, you have no idea <laughs> the kind of stuff that was going on. Nobody could see us. You know what I mean? Right. Like nobody could be in our business. You didn't have a phone in your hand with a camera on it to blast to everybody a moment of craziness that you wish wouldn't follow you the rest of your life. Like we were allowed some grace in that sense. And I'm grateful for that because I can think of so many times where I and, and other people that, you know, you would know, but I'm not a name caller. I don't tell people's business, but where we would be <laughs> in situations, you know what I'm saying? Like crazy situations, um, both at work and not at work. If anybody had had a phone and put it out in the world, like lives would have been, I'm just so glad we didn't have social media. <laughs> back. Those times then, Oh, oh my God, so good. The kids don't understand though, Ananda. The kids don't understand what the, the what those times were and how big of a that would have been. Yeah, no, what it would have been. been. Now, <laughs> then it would now. Yeah. yeah. No, you, you wouldn't have been able to handle it, is what the point oh, is. Oh, no, you wouldn't. But but I mean it's similar to what is happening now. People don't mm -hmm. change much, right? People, we're the same people all the time. Every generation you got people doing what they do. It's just how we are as human beings. And when we accept it, maybe things will get easier. I don't know, but right. people don't change much. And so it, you can go back to my grandmother's generation. Elvis Presley was, oh my God, he's shaking his hips. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can go back to the, my generation, like there's always something or someone or, or, or an event to look at and say, oh my gosh, you know? And, and so we're not exempt or special in that way. It's just that millions of people aren't seeing it right in front of them in their hands until right now, until these days. And that changes a lot of things. I mean, it's a very intimate way to uh, share your life and a very intimate way to reach millions of people, most of whom you'll never even know you reached because it's so quick and easy right. for social media. So yeah, it's a different game today. It's a completely different game today. It definitely is. But I'm glad that we were able to re reach each other on social media because I had just took a chance. That's one good thing about it. <laughs> and commented because what was it? The post that you said, did you know that you can do this? I forget what post it was. That I did? Yes. And you were like, did oh, you was it like a self-help? Was it like a, a hack, a life hack or something? Yeah, it was a life hack. Which one was it? Uh, I've only done a few of oh, the things that I've discovered, the pouring the milk a different way, the opening the keys with a stapler remover. Yeah. It, I the staple remover? Uh-huh. And you said, why don't you ain't tell, tell, tell them, listen. Oh, they, yes. They, that's what they have to find out on the comments. I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, like, why didn't you tell us this? You said you knew. I was like, share the news. I'm letting yeah. people know none of my secret little, sec little secrets then. You should tell all of them. Why not? Because they don't tell me their secrets. Well, it's not tick for tack. Do what you think is right. Yeah. Forget what they do. And this is true. <laughs> <laughs> but when I, saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, I totally, totally did that. And That's even, smart if you figured that out on your own. I, I, uh, it took me a lot of broken nails and cut up fingers to figure that one out. I could only imagine. I was messing with, you know, like these little things and staplers. Like, what is that? It's a stapler. Oh, a little small one. Okay, yeah. yeah. Small one. Was, I got one right on my desk. 
I was messing with staplers and like paper clips at such a young age. I was like, let me be grown and just start stapling stuff. <laughs> because you know, kids, oh, that must have been fun for your mom. <laughs> It was fun for me. She didn't even care. I used to always be like into arts and crafts and have like scissors and like the, the yarn and gimp, all that, all, all that little crappy stuff and pens. That's good. That's good for your brain. That's creative and artistic. My son does a lot of that. He loves it. I was just going to ask you about being a mother. Your, your son is nine, right? He's nine, yeah. And how would you say, exactly. you know, being a mother has, you know, just inspired your life while you, you're going through the treatments that you're going through right now? In general, in my life, I'd always wanted to be a mom. And until I became a mom and it realized how hard what I was asking for really was. <laughs> I was a really, really focused mom though. I was so grateful, I am so grateful to have had the opportunity to be a stay-at-home mom. I was able to do motherhood in the very beginning from birth to you know seven, eight years old until this kind of breast cancer stuff hit and I had to start veering off and taking more time out for myself. Um, I was able to do everything the way I wanted. I had a home birth. I breastfed for a very long time. I was completely natural with my child. I, I um, uh, homeschooled from the time he was in kindergarten until second grade. His first year of school wasn't until third grade. So, or, you know, public school. And um, I'm really happy about that. I, I feel like I gave my son an amazing start at this life. Um, he knows he's loved, you know, he's secure. He got a lot of things I didn't get. And I think that's why I was so committed to doing it because my parents divorced when I was two. I didn't have a stable, um, you know, two parent home. Many people don't, but uh, mm -hmm. it took its toll on me. You know, the, the uh, neglect issues and the abandonment issues and the lack of trust issues and people and all the stuff that I've dealt with um, and continue to deal with on some level every yeah. now and then. I've worked through a lot of it, but you know, it never fully goes away. That's why yeah, you want to prevent it. Fully. It never goes away. You want to prevent it for your children as much as possible. And that's what I really wanted to do for him. You know, I have six God kids too, who I consider mine, but I didn't get to raise them like I, you know, raised the child that I birthed. And, and I just, it was always so important to me to give him that stability and having me there for him that, that I lacked. And, um, I did, and so I feel really proud about that. And the way it's affected the current journey of, um, you know, getting these cancer cells out of my body is, I, I've had to relinquish a lot of uh, mother mothering time. You know, this health journey has taken over uh, my life, <laughs> and rightfully so. I mean, when you want to save your life, you have to give that some time. You got to focus on yeah. that. It's a lot. There's a lot to do when you do it a more holistic way, the way that I'm doing it. Um, and so. I, his his dad has him a lot more now, which is difficult for me because I, he's always been with me and, and that's hard on both of us. But I figure, you know, I got to take the time now to take care of myself and then I have the rest of my life to spend with him. I have no plan on going anywhere. So I'm doing what I got to do right now to make sure that is the reality. And I'm glad that you said that, that you're not going anywhere because you're not. You are not. I'm not. I'm, listen, kicking and screaming if you try to get me out of here. I am staying. <laughs> you are here, my sister. And yes. I love the fact that you were, you, you're staying so encouraged through the, you know, just th through these difficult times. And I'm terribly sorry to hear that this is, you know, you're dealing with this, but I'm glad that your message is to the young women to just go get a mammogram. Don't miss those, those checkups. It's so important. So important. And this could have happened to me. Listen, this can happen to you either way, right? The mammograms don't keep you from getting cancer. They allow you to understand what's going in your body early enough to do something about it where what you do about it can be very effective and can actually save and extend your life. That's really what that's about. We, none of us get out of this life alive. My goal isn't to live forever. That's an impossible goal, right? I know the inevitable is that death comes for everybody. I also know that I have some control over how, when, what, where uh, there's there's some authority I have over my life and and you know it's a lot and when you look at it like that there's really no need to for for even being sorry like for what it can happen to anybody I'm not special I'm not unique I'm just someone it happened to who happens to be willing to run her mouth about it and, and talk about it where a lot of people may not be and I completely understand why it's a difficult thing to um, live through publicly you know and and I didn't live through it publicly for a very long time I was very private about it on purpose I had a goal. Um, I knew what I was trying to do. I had to switch things up in my life. I was going through a lot of changes and it just wasn't the right time to let anybody uh, in on that. And the reason that now was the right time is because I'm, I'm in a much better place. Like 
personally, I'm more stable with everything, right? So I could handle the influx of um, energy and, and people reaching out to me and all that, where last year I wouldn't have been able to handle that at all and would have been, you know, not as effective, I think. Um, and this year I really felt like maximizing Breast Cancer Awareness Month with, with a real person's story, you know, and someone who, like you said before, is someone that there are still some people on the planet <laughs> who look at me and say, oh yeah, I would listen to her. So I yeah. felt like I wanted to use my platform and my voice and my face and, you know, whatever personality I've built up over the years um, to really help other women not make the same mistake because part of this I could have avoided had I listened to my sister, who's a doctor who told me, get the mammograms, who had I listened to the doctors I was seeing who were like, you really, you sure you want to refuse a mammogram? I mean, there were chances for me to listen that I didn't take. And the reason that I didn't was because I felt like the information that I had about radiation was sound. I still feel like that. I know that the, 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 the research that's been done that says mammograms and radiation in general can be harmful. That's true, right? But even when something is true, it doesn't mean that it's the only thing that matters. I also needed to be paying attention to the fact that detecting something in my body was a very valuable thing, right? More valuable than the detriment of a little bit of radiation. And I didn't understand that balance, which is exactly what I want women to understand. Like, yes, it can be, uh, it, it's a little bit of pain, but, um, and it's a little bit of radiation, but you have to take both those things as little bits of poison to avoid buckets of poison. It's really about swallowing a little bit to avoid having to take a lot. And if you get into trouble in your body, like I am, you, you have to take a lot more than that. So do the easiest thing to avoid the hardest thing, you know? Yeah. And you, and you've been on this journey for, for two years. Two years. Yeah. Almost. I, um, well, I mean, if you really want to break it down, David, when you have a tumor in your body, that tumor has been growing for many years, right? They told me it was there. It was detectable two years ago. So I've known about it for two years, but if once you do all the research that I've been doing over the last two years, you, you understand that this is a long process of developing and growing in your body when you're talking about tumors. It, well, at least this one, I mean, everybody's different, right? But uh, this particular tumor probably started, I don't know, seven, six years before I detected it. And, and so all that time it was growing was the window where a mammogram might have found it when it was smaller. There are tumors that are growing in bodies that mammograms don't find. So is it a complete fail safe? No, um, you also need to do your own self exam so that you understand the terrain of your breast. And I know you're, you know, don't, you don't have breasts, you're not a woman, but males get <laughs> breast cancer yeah, males, too. Males do get breast cancer. Yeah, and so it is important for you. And then you, you all are susceptible to other kinds of cancers that aren't as prevalent like prostate cancer. So there are tests you need to do to stay on top of that at a certain age. And there's things you need to do in awareness about your body to know the terrain of your body as well. I think the message of knowing your body is true for, for anybody living in a human form. You know, it's, it's true for all of us. Yeah, it definitely is. And that's why I try to tell people that, you know, you definitely want to take care of yourself and make sure that you are really being in touch with your body. Yeah, well, you're the only one who can. I mean, when you think about it, who else is living in there? <laughs> Nobody, you know, like you're the one that, you know how your body works. You know how it feels. You know when you're, your something is a little off. You know when something that you've eaten feels bad in your stomach. Like no one can tell you that, but you, the best doctor in the world can't do that work for you. No. You know, and, and so you have to pay attention. You have to be aware. And the earlier you start it, the better. So I'm really happy to um, be with you on your platform because you have so many young viewers and, the younger you are and the more aware you are, the better your chances of having a long life that you love living, you know, because you have the ability to have the time ahead of you and, and to hold on to it. You can take care of yourself. And I know I remember feeling invincible, trust me. That's why I was doing all that crazy stuff back in the TV days. I was like, nothing's gonna touch me. You know, I can smoke a pack a day, right? But I mean, there's something to be said about that too. You gotta have fun in this life. I think there's balance. You're living, you're at the age where you need to be doing the crazy stuff because if you do it at 50, you're gonna look crazy as well as being crazy. You don't wanna do that. Get that out of your system now. Go ahead and do your wild stuff. Don't tape it and post it anywhere. But oh, you know, no. I condone that. I, I'm all for people having their heyday because it is necessary. You gotta get it out of your system. It's so necessary. And I try to tell people, I'm not, I'm not had that. I've just been, I've just been so focused on the crab. How are you? How old are you? 27. 
Oh yeah. No, you in the middle of it now. You can still have it, except now COVID done messed you up. But you know. Oh yeah. This whole craziness. <laughs> did want to ask you about, even though you were already homeschooling your son before and so like that, how has he been adjusting? I wanted to just kind of take it back to that. To like just he hates it. Really. <laughs> hates it yeah he he's a really social kid he liked seeing his friends every day in class and he liked going into school and we walked to school and we had you know there was a whole uh kind of habit we had this you know thing we did and now we don't have it so yeah he's really miserable just like almost every other child I know who is not used to just sitting in the house all day doing school on a computer that's that's a difficult adjustment um and, you know, I, I've tried to be pretty lenient. Just, I, I've always been really strict about his screen time and how, what games he can play and how much, you know, he can watch TV. And now I'm just like, I'm not completely like whatever, but I, I mean, what, what, you, what can you do? If you can barely go outside, you're gonna go crazy. You know, I will go crazy as well as him going crazy. So we both need you to sit here and watch a movie for two hours and maybe do it again. I think all parents have become a lot more lenient. You have to be adaptable, right? And it's yeah. great to have um, standards you hold on to, but also in this human life, we have to be flexible. And if it's time to adjust those standards and be able to kind of go with the flow, don't stress yourself out for having to do that. You'll get back on track at some point when things have normalized, but things are not normal right now. So we can act abnormal along with the rest of the world and be okay with that. So I always say, be easy on yourself, be easy on your kids. It's a rough time for everybody. And when you compound that with stuff everybody's going through, like, you know, maybe health journeys. I know there's a lot of people dealing with the same health stuff I'm dealing with because I've heard from them on social media. They've responded to that post. And I'm in touch with a lot of those women who are also fighting breast cancer right now. And then there's people who are fighting other things right now. I mean, disease is rampant in our country for a reason. I think we're eating wrong. I think we're stressed out. Um, we don't have enough ability to release some of that stress in healthy ways. And so it builds up. So we have, you know, a lot of systemic chronic illness going on right now from heart disease, to cancer, to MS, and all these other things that some people don't look at as chronic, but I definitely look at as chronic and food based. Yeah. yeah. I think it all starts with food and I'm learning that the hard way. So my eating has changed drastically. I was going to ask you about your, your, your dieting. What you say like your regular dieting is for you? I've learned, I've learned so. I can't wait to be done with this and healthy and healed and just be able to start really sharing everything I've learned because there, there is some stuff we all need to know. And I just don't have the time right now to really put it together the way I want to to share it. But I, I'll, I'll tell you this, I've changed my diet uh, nine times <laughs> since Ooh. January of 2019. I have tried so many different eating plans with so many different goals for those plans. And what I found so far for where my body is, right? Cause this is really just about what works for me. That's all I can find out. Everybody else has to do and find out what works for them. But what has worked for me right now is the keto diet because keto cuts almost all sugar the way that I do it, all sugar out of your diet and sugar feeds cancer. The medical community knows that. They know it very well because they use sugar to make cancer light up in PET scans. So sugar feeds cancer. And while you're fighting cancer, if you're eating sugar you're, you're defeating the whole purpose you're fighting against yourself. So I had to cut out all the sugar, all the car, all grains, because that converts to sugar in your body if you don't burn it off. Uh, a lot of the food, well, all the fruits, some of the vegetables. I have a list of you know lowest carb veggies and that's what I eat from. And it's also a list of veggies that are uh, shown to be anti-cancer. And those are the veggies I pull from. And otherwise it's super boring. You know, I've, I've had to cram in to a couple of, uh, you know, 12, 24 months of, really focused discipline, what I could have been doing over seven, eight years to avoid this, right? So if I was just doing a little bit better eating, who knows, I might not have gotten here. I probably still would have gotten here because I think this is happening to me for a reason. I am the kind of voice that this kind of journey needed. And um, I'm the one who'll share it and who'll talk about it and really speak to it in a way that other people can receive it and hear it. And there's a lot that needs to change. So if I, if I'm going to be used in this way, I'm, 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 grateful for it. Right. Have you ever thought about writing a book? Somebody approached me about that uh, after the post. You know, I haven't thought about it until all of this kind of um, new surge of interest in it has happened. I mean, over the two years, I've definitely been keeping a journal. I, uh, I keep food journals. So that's 
really meticulous notes on everything I've eaten, all the supplements I've taken, all the water I've drank, every single thing I put into my body and done to my body is in these notes. I've also been recording all of it because I'm a TV person. So, you know, I, I also don't have a great memory. So I knew that I never wanted to go through this again. And if I was going to remember it, and be able to share it, I was gonna to have to record it because I wouldn't be able to sit here two years later and be like, here's every single thing I did and how I felt and what the day looked like. I wouldn't remember all that. So I've been filming myself um, almost every day. So I have thousands of hours of footage that I gotta figure out how to share. But yeah, I mean, whatever way um, I need to, to help get the message out and to help women and, and general people understand what all their options are when it comes to reclaiming their health, you know, whether it's cancer or any of the other illnesses I've talked about that are rampant in our country. We all know about them because people we love, most of us know somebody dealing with something in their health, right? So diabetes, a big one. My dad's a diabetic. So we all kind of have experience with illness in general, but the common denominator is food. One of the other common denominators is information. Once you know better, you can do better. And the information isn't being given. In fact, it's being, you know, bad information is being given. We have way more access to food that kills us than we have to food that will help us heal. And that's a problem. I think it's a problem we've identified uh, in other ways. For me, the direct identification is about, uh, about breast cancer since that's what I'm dealing with. But I, I think it's really time to, to hit some of these issues a little harder and to give people a real understanding of how much authority they have over these bodies we live in and how much change you can make happen in your body without, you know, without a lot of money and without any doctor's help. That is good. Just knowing how your body works goes a long way. Yeah, it, it, knowing your body goes a long way. And I think that this is definitely a time while we're in this quarantine period for people to really be more extra cautious. Yeah, absolutely. Some people and discipline, you know, discipline is, most of us don't have a lot of it, but when you go through stuff like this, you develop it real quick. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, does my life depend on this? Okay, I'm gonna do everything. I'm gonna do everything right. right. And uh, you really have to step up to it. So, but if you can get that before you have any illness, you're winning. Yeah, and I wanted to talk to you about um, when you when your show did come out, did you had it and stuff like that? Like just dealing with that, control that that contract had and not being able to utilize your voice you talking about the talk show oh yeah talk show. Yeah, yeah yeah the talk show was a trip i you know i can't i when i look back at things and i and i try to analyze them and i go wow yeah what the hell was going on with me what happened right then it, it's always really clear to me that it's no one person's fault i mean relationships that i've had that might have failed i don't look back and say oh he was a dog there were two people involved two people bear some responsibility, right? That's just fair. And I think the same when I look at uh, business, any relationship, right? So the business of me being in a talk show had a lot to do with me as an individual, not, uh, not doing well with authority. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not someone who gets told what to do very well. But you were, but you were at that age where problem. you were growing into your adulthood more where you were, you, you had to be vocal and present at the table saying, you know, what, how you wanted to be branded, how you wanted to look and everything. Yeah, I just, what I didn't understand at the time was that you needed someone else to say that for you so that you didn't ruin your relationships with the executives, the people that were doing, you know, paying for your show. I was your age when I started doing that talk show, maybe one year younger. And by the time it aired, I was your age. And so I was one of the youngest women to ever have her own talk show, like named after her, right? I always go like this because I never felt like it was mine. There wasn't enough of me reflected in it for me to really own that, but it did have my name on it. Um, but th it was a lot of pressure and I wasn't able or hadn't at the time up to that point put together the kind of team. I had great people, but I didn't have a really cohesive functioning team that you see uh, the most successful people really have. And so I was fighting a lot of my own battles, like literally cussing producers out and you know getting in a room with executives and like having to go at it and that's not that one that's not how I want to treat people right that's not who I want to be in a room it's not who I typically am in a room but if I'm backed into a corner I will fight <laughs> like everybody else <laughs> trust me you don't want you you don't want the smoke and they got all the smoke they got all of the smoke back then. they got all of it and I'm really really uh passionate and I have a very interesting temper when I'm challenged and so you know, it was, I was young and crazy a little bit and, and 
not in the best of control, but no regrets. I mean, I, I definitely see how it could have gone differently, but there were more factors than just me um, as to why things didn't you know, really get to go well. By the time 9-11 happened, we were already falling apart. So yeah. I'm not surprised that uh, you know, we got that one season because I was like, please only give me one season. I can't do this for another year. I was praying for it. Yeah, and then just when you think about to like all the interviews that you have done and stuff like that and just being able to see some of those people that you that you connected with then to like and just kind of see like them now and just like when you think about that entire journey like what was going through your mind and like what goes through your mind and just seeing like I've interviewed with this person and this person when it was when it was like a whole different scene than what it is now and like it was so iconic to when we think about just that time of the 2000s to what it is now. Well, that's what it looked like to you because of the perspective. You were at home watching it and, you know, observing it. In it, it didn't feel like that. It didn't feel like that to me. I mean, we knew we were doing something. You know, we knew we were working hard. We knew we were, like, things were dope. And we were, we knew that. Well, I don't know what other people knew. Let me not say we. I, I knew that. Um, but I would say the people that I've seen, you know, that were up and coming at that time when I was doing all like they're breaking their interviews, breaking their first songs, doing all that stuff who are now mega stars. I just look at them and I'm so proud. I'm, I'm so proud of them because I know what they went through to get there. And I know what it took, you know, and I know the discipline and I know the focus and I know the dedication and I know the putting aside their lives that they really wanted. Um, and there's a lot of sacrifice that goes into it that you don't know about looking at it from the outside that you would never believe because it looks so easy. You get to watch it and it looks so effortless, you know, and it's not. It's grueling. It's brutal. It's discipline and commitment and hard work. And it's a lot of sacrifice. So the people you see now who were top of the game, who were coming up through the time that I was coming up, they have put the work in and that's why they're successful. So I just feel proud of them. And I say, go, keep going, you, you know, <laughs> hey, make us all look good. That's how I feel. Right. And it, it, were there, are there any particular interviews that you can think back to that were just like your favorite? I know Elmo was one. <laughs> <laughs> you knew I was going to say Elmo. Oh my God. I was like a two year old when Elmo walked. I couldn't believe it. I almost started crying. It was so stupid because <laughs> I knew it was a person, but it was right. still Elmo. <laughs> it was like suspended disbelief. That, that day was crazy. I literally couldn't shut up the whole day. I was like, oh my God, Elmo's here. And they were like, no, no. It's okay. I was like, it's not okay. It's Elmo. Be like, but it's him. Oh, I love that day. That day was so much fun. It's making me tear up again. I love Elmo, so I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I no. love Elmo. You can be ashamed to admit that. Like, that was <sighs> such a moment for you. Yeah. But, you know, then the classics. I mean, the people that we've lost, obviously, Whitney Houston and Aaliyah and, and just people who, you know, I had the privilege of having that little moment um, in their history with. That's really special. Um, but everybody, you know, I, I was always impressed that the people who I thought were going to be the worst, like, I don't know, have the worst attitude, all these things you hear about somebody before you meet them. Everybody yeah. was so pleasant and beautiful. I mean, there were some people who were jerks, but few and far between. And for the most part, everybody really was going for their dreams. It felt like, you know, people were coming in there like, I, I this album means everything to me. Like, this is my life. And you could feel that and see that. And to be a part of helping them accomplish these dreams was magical. And I got to do it like all day, every day, you know, for a very long time. We were live every, I, I think, and I, maybe this is why, you know, I got so popular with people from the time I started Teen Summit to the time I left MTV, I was on television literally almost every single day of every single one of those years. Yeah. Except for a few, like I was on TV, literally every day over and over and over and over and over. And so that, that, that's massive. I got to really impact a lot of people, both from people who were watching and also people who were coming through trying to get their projects done and, and wanting their music to be heard and wanting their story to be told or whatever it was, their movie to get watched, you know? So I feel like, I feel like I did a lot of good in the world and, and, you know, maybe, maybe that was paying it forward. And that's why I'm getting so much good coming back at me when I need it right now. I don't know. It all works together somehow, but 
it was it was beautiful back then and I'm really really grateful I got to be a part of it because it was kind of a once in a lifetime and once in like 10 20 million people get to do that kind of opportunity it's like winning the lotto (laughs) it definitely is like winning a lotto when you when you think about it yeah me like as a fan and just like just reminiscing to that time and just like me and my kids thing as at six I'm just like oh my gosh like I can't believe you were watching at six. Yeah. <laughs> and my mom. You, know, you should not have been watching at six. Oh, listen, I was in the, I was actually in this room watching. I was downstairs in this house watching it. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. <laughs> so you have memories right in that house. Oh my God. Of watching us on TV, of all of us VJs and Teen Summit even maybe. I don't know. Were you six watching it in TV or six watching BT? No. More so MTV than, than yeah, BT. yeah, yeah, twenty seven, yeah, yeah. It was definitely more MTV because I mean BET had you know like Rap City and stuff like that. I was cool with that, and I love BET. They know I yeah. do, but that just wasn't that just wasn't the fit for me because I was so pop culture then. Who were your favorite um, artists back then? Ooh, At was, six, who's your favorite it artist? Was, it, was <laughs> def- it was definitely Britney. It was Christine. Yeah. It was uh, yeah. of course. TLC. I mean, like, oh my goodness! Like, how could you not? It was. Oh, they're amazing. It was amazing. Mandy was was so dope. Of course. Did you get into like the Chumbawambas and all of that? Were you? That was that was more like the rock side of the pop. That was but the rock side. But I did have appreciation for what it was, and especially seeing it all play out in the programming space. Yeah. And even like how it did when it came to the awards. Yeah, and shows like TRL where you would get this nice mix of all the music. So even if you were there for the pop, you were going to hear a little bit of everything. Those award show experiences for you and just being able to experience that at such an age and like just prep for those moments. You know, the prep was packets like this big of information and and it's homework. It's, I really, 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 um, it's hard to emphasize what a different experience is Uh, it is from seeing it as a viewer and doing it as a person in it doing it like it is nothing like what you would think it's like because you get to see like a finished polished package right presented beautifully with commercials (laughs) everybody's perfectly shot everybody looks good it's almost like you know the behind the scenes and the lead up to it is like the mess you know it's like everything's getting cleaned up and presented to you good but i'm back here watching it fall apart you know so it, nothing like what you would think <laughs> let me say that and there's always you know the producers are the real heroes of all the television that you grew up on because they were keeping everything together and most of what we did on mtv at that time was live television and teen summit was live television so to do live tv and do it well it's a completely different monster absolutely different monster and there would be you know five and six people behind the camera i'm standing here with an artist interviewing somebody there's an ifb in my ear so a producer's talking here someone's standing there with cards the prompter's over here i'm having to read that i mean there were like 15 different things going on to pay attention to to make it all come together and yeah the host is important because if you have somebody who can't handle all that it's all going to fall apart on camera but your producers are vital like they are who made my job possible. And so there's so many great producers I worked with that they're the real, you know, the glue. They're the glue that made it all work. Um, you'd be shocked <laughs> looking behind the scenes what it, what it really takes to make it look so easy from where you were watching it. Yeah, and it's a lot of work putting television Ooh. together. Yeah, it, it still work. is, but you know, different. And a lot of it's not live now. I mean, there are some things that are, but it's just a completely different beast. I look back sometimes and actually go, how did I even do that? Like, I don't know how I did some of this stuff I did. I don't know. I think you get into it and when you can just talk, I mean, clearly I talk a lot. So when you can just talk and talk about anything and just keep going, like people could feed yeah. me stuff and I'd be talking and they'd say, next, blah, 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 and I'd still be talking while I'm listening and then go right into whatever they said, you know, was next. There's a, there's a, I don't know, there's a skill, I guess, or I don't know if it's a talent or a skill or ability, whatever you want to call it. There's an ability to do that that starts to get addictive because Mm -hmm. there's an adrenaline that happens. There's like um, all the drugs your body makes, this brilliant pharmacy, you know, we have at our disposal, the the adrenaline, the, the whatever, I don't even know what drugs they are, but you can feel them when they're coming in, like they make you, I would be tweaked out coming off of live TV for an hour and a half or however long we went sometimes, just like you're fried, but you're, you feel high. 
You know what I mean? With everything going on, with everything you had to do and like this, that, this, that, and then a 20 second commercial break or whatever it was. And then you're right back at it. It was like this constant adrenaline rush and it really became addictive. I mean, I would get weekends off sometimes. Um, and the days that I would get off, I would crash because it, it burns you out. You know, it's almost like you're, you're just this vessel that all this stuff is processing through. And then you're like, whew, you got a break from it. It was, it's pretty intense, but you know, amazing at the same time. It was, it was a perfectly set up period of time for someone like me to be able to step in and take advantage of, right? And yeah. it's because I love people, I'm good with people, I can talk, I, you know, I look halfway decent some of the time. And, you know, I could just really work all of these different angles um, really well. So when I look back, I go, yeah, that was, that was, bro, that was some good stuff. While I was in it, I felt crazy. Wow. But looking back, <laughs> I'm really grateful for it. And I realized that I did good work and I'm proud of it. And you should be. And I want to say thank you for setting such a tone and path. People like myself, I mean, oh, uh, people like us, you know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, because what that time was means so much to so many people. And I know you hear people say that. I do hear it now. I yeah. never heard it then. I didn't realize it then. Well, of course, I mean, maybe it didn't mean that much then. You understand what it means even in hindsight. You oh, know what I mean? Maybe in the moment as a six, six to 12 year old or whatever it was, you couldn't say, oh, this is so special. It's meaningful to me. But you can say that now. So, yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. I worked hard. So it's paying off now. Yeah. You work hard, especially with live television. Like people don't understand that's, that's work. Like you said, so much yeah. work. Yeah. And a lot of pressure and stress because you don't have a chance to redo anything. You, if you got it wrong, you got it wrong and you're going to keep going, <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, Ananda, it was so great chatting with you. I am so grateful that we had this moment today. Thank you so much. Me too. Much. Nice to hang out with you too. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So where can fans continue to like stay up to date with you like on social media just so that they can stay up to date with your journey? Um, I'm really best on Instagram. It's streamlined. I understand it better. There's less to figure out. I'm on Facebook. I just don't get it as well. So I don't post directly there that much. I post directly to Instagram. And really that's where I'm at. I'm on Twitter too, but still not as heavily as I am on Instagram. That's really my, my home base because I, I understand it. It makes sense to me and it's clear and I know how to use it. <laughs> so that makes it easy. I like things that are easy. I'll and, help um, <laughs> yeah, my Instagram is, what is it? I am, so I'm Ananda Lewis. I am Ananda Lewis. Um, that's my hashtag. And I, you know, I'm gonna start posting more stuff about this health journey, more stuff about prevention and generally how to take care of yourself and how to understand your body as the brilliant machine that it is so we can all do better. You know, I, I need to do better. I am doing better. I'd like to help people not have to get down a path where they feel like they have to do better, but they want to do better because they know that that is the key to prevention and good health. So it would be good for you to follow me because you'll get a lot of good information. I'm going to start being able to share a little more stuff and one day, one day soon, hopefully, I'll be posting a big celebration video saying that I am completely cancer free. That is coming. I just it don't is. know when. <laughs> definitely, we're speaking into existence. We're all of that. We're praying on it. We're all, all things into existence. You, you'll Thank be you. that very soon. Energy matters, so I appreciate that. It really does. All right, you guys. So that was our show for this evening. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Shout out to Ananda and Angelica for stopping by tonight's show. And thank you guys for tuning in. And shout out to their amazing team for making it happen. Guess what, guys? You got to make sure you guys tune in every single Tuesday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 Pacific Time for my West Coasters. Because, you know, we in the West Coast. So West Coast was good. 7 p.m. for us over here. Make sure that you guys continue to follow at David Dwayne at On Air with David. If you have any advice that you guys need for Dear Dwayne, send an email to info at onairwithdavid.com. New website coming soon, and all things will be all on air with David Dwayne. So make sure you guys check us out. And we've got some special IG lives popping up. I told you guys that we'll be popping up and doing things and stuff like that, you know, while I'm here in LA. So we're doing some lives. Make sure that y'all stay tuned because you never know who we're going to interview next in next week's show. Um, just follow social media, damn it, so you can find out. All right. <laughs>